Welcome to the Bill Kelly Podcast, critical discussions in critical times. Here's your host, Bill Kelly. Welcome to another edition of the Bill Kelly Podcast, critical discussions in these critical times. I'm your host, Bill Kelly, and it's great to have you back with us. The times, they are changing. And we're talking politically, of course, and when you look at what's going on globally, uh, it could be frightening, encouraging, uh, but certainly uh, worth talking about. Uh, of course, it looks as if there's going to be a change in government in France. Uh, that election, of course, takes a number of weeks, actually, to, to work its way through. But it looks like Macron is in deep trouble there. As we do this podcast today, uh, voters in the UK are going to the polls, and uh, it looks like there could be a change of leadership uh, in the in Great Britain and in that House of Commons in the not too distant future. And, of course, we know what's going on with our neighbors to the south with President Biden and uh, his disastrous uh, performance in the debate last week with Donald Trump. And I'm going to talk about that, but I want to do it in a future podcast because it's it's separate and apart and I think deserves uh, a great deal of discussion. On this particular show, I want to focus on what's happening here in Canada, our home and native land, because we, too, have controversies here. And it's all about leadership and it's all about our prime minister. And it's all about what are the next steps, if any, that uh, he is going to take, his government is going to take, and how the Canadian people are going to respond to it. The uh, focus of this and the, 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 the linchpin seems to be for many people uh, the results of the by-election that occurred in Toronto last week uh, that was a, a liberal stronghold for as long as a lot of people can remember. Uh, but, of course, last week, the uh, Conservatives won the Toronto-St. Paul by-election. And, well, many people consider it to be a surprise. It was a close race. But, nonetheless, uh, that is no longer a Liberal seat. And a lot of observers and pundits figured, okay, that's the last straw. Uh, Justin Trudeau's popularity has been nosediving over the last little while. That's probably going to be the last piece of information that he needs to simply understand that it's time to step aside. Well, the uh, results and the way the Prime Minister has responded to this seem to indicate that uh, he either didn't get the message or he's got it and is simply going to say, hell no, I won't go. Uh, he continues to signal that he's going to stay on as Liberal leader after last week's surprise Conservative win in Toronto-St. Paul. Much to the chagrin, we're told, of an awful lot of Liberal supporters, long-time supporters, including members of the Liberal caucus or former members of the Liberal caucus, Gaffer McKenna, a former cabinet minister in the Trudeau government who stepped aside a little while ago, has gone public and suggested that it's time for the Liberals to have a new leader. Others have suggested that's probably a very good idea right now. Uh, there even are a couple of people that uh, that are within the caucus that are suggesting that they would do that. Uh, the story that is making headlines now uh, comes from one anonymous MP uh, who spoke to CBC News on the condition of anonymity in order to uh, basically continue to hold on to their job, says that a number of Liberal MPs are considering not running if Justin Trudeau is the leader of the Liberal Party going into the next election. Now, that's an interesting twist. Uh, to suggest that they, he has lost the room, as they say in, in that parlance, uh, I think would be an understatement of this time. Uh, Liberal MPs and, and people I've talked to who know what's going on in, in closed behind closed doors up in Ottawa in the House of Commons or within caucus, are saying that uh, the Justin Trudeau is is just at the stage right now where he's continuing with the platitudes, but those who are in that caucus are very, very concerned about the results of the upcoming election, whether it's going to be six months, what, or 2015, uh, whatever, the, or 2025, rather, the, whatever the case might be. And now, and, and you have to look at what's going on here and understand the dynamic. Yes, there are a number of cabinet ministers and high-profile liberals within that caucus that are reaffirming their support for Justin Trudeau. You know, he's our guy, he's our leader. Uh, but at the same time, I think they understand the severity of what's going on and the implications of this. The, the polling that has gone on for the last 18 to 24 months seems to indicate that Canadians have had it with Justin Trudeau. Now, I, I have to, at this point of our discussion here, and the just to full disclosure suggests I, I've never been a fan. I, I, I was never warm to this guy. I had my concerns about Justin Trudeau as a political leader. Uh, and as I, I saw him even before he was the leader of the party, I, I just seemed to assume that it was my perception anyway, 
that the support for for Justin Trudeau was like this wide and about this thin, uh, and 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 I think we've seen that magnify itself, and I see the the results of that. Is and and I don't want to let my my indifference toward Justin Trudeau, uh, you know, damage the fact that there are some things that need to be acknowledged here that he and his government have done, which I think are very good for the country. Uh, you know, the the national child care program. Uh, the dental program, a number of initiatives like this, I think, are, are worthy of, of uh, I, I think, a, a legacy for Mr. Trudeau and for his government. Uh, the way he handled the pandemic, again, uh, very, very tough time. Uh, some very difficult and very controversial decisions. Uh, you know, the, the 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 financing, of course, and the help, the financial help for small businesses and people that were being challenged. I think it was a great move. I. In hindsight, I think it went on a little bit too long, but the, the fact of the matter is it probably saved an awful lot of small businesses and people from bankruptcy and from the precarious situation that a lot of us found ourselves. However, that was yesterday, and, and that's the political mindset these days. What are you doing for us lately? Uh, grocery prices, gasoline prices, uh, the carbon tax, and the indication that that seems to be heavy on our everyday lives are all factors that the government seems to be oblivious to, at least to the response that they're getting. Now, I'm not talking about the political response up in Ottawa with Polyev and, and, and his natterings on and his platitudes and his slogans. I'm talking about the way everyday Canadians are responding to this. And I know that, uh, you know, the, the Prime Minister has been down in the polls before, uh, and frankly, he has been an underdog in just about every election that he's run in as Liberal leader, and he's won them so far. Uh, but that's one thing to consider. The other thing is, look, if you're going to play Russian roulette and keep spinning the, the cylinder, uh, eventually your luck's going to run out. And that may well be the case with this prime minister at this time. Uh, despite the fact that they brought out what was supposed to be a taxpayer-friendly budget a few months ago, uh, there's been no bump in the polls for the Liberals. Uh, despite the fact that they've come up with a number of other goodies that we're trying to en enhance and, 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 and I think make people feel better about their economic situation, there has been no bump, uh, despite the fact that inflation has started to go down and down and down. Uh, the Liberals aren't writing any success because of that. And and I think the message here that we seem to get in Canada, that many of the Prime Minister's not getting, is it's not necessarily the policies of the Liberal government. It's you, Mr. Prime Minister. Canadians are tired of you. They're tired of the platitudes. They're tired of your attitude towards this. And this this whole, I think, manifestation of, of, of what people really think of you is starting to come together now. And I think it's starting to gain some ground that you just don't relate to everyday Canadians. Even as late as uh, a couple of days ago, uh, the prime minister says, look, we've had uh, different calls with different members of his caucus from across the country, not just in the GTA where the, the by-election loss occurred, but he says, we want to talk about how we can make sure we are continuing our work Canadi connecting with Canadians and make sure that we are continuing to deliver for people. Platitudes. People don't want platitudes at this stage, Mr. Prime Minister. They want action, and they're not getting it from your government. And the more you continue with this, and the more continue with whistling past the graveyard to what I think is a grave, if you excuse the bad metaphor here, a grave situation about your political leadership and the party's future, you don't seem to get it. You don't seem to get the message. The overriding message here seems to be uh, it's time to step down. It's it's one of the hardest decisions for anybody in elected office to say, my time is over. Invariably, nobody seems to get that message, and you wait until you get your doors blown off in the next election, which may well be the case with uh, Justin Trudeau and with the Liberal Party. And I think an awful lot of people in the Liberal caucus, I think an awful lot of people in his cabinet know that, and they're concerned about their political futures. And, you know, when, when these sorts of things happen, and certainly happened with the Mulroney government, well, it was the Kim Campbell government by the time the election rolled around, uh, but they see that there are some very talented and very capable members of parliament that are going to be collateral damage when that big, big house is swept away and people simply say, we've had enough of you guys, we want change. And that seems to be the track that we're on right now. Can that change with the new liberal, liberal leader? I don't know. I don't know. There are so many changes and so many options here. I don't know that Canadian people are actually going to gravitate to somebody else. The one thing that the Liberals may have on their side, and I mean may have, is they have time. 
there may well be at least another year before the next election. And that may be time for them to rebrand and, and bring us a, a different person in. Uh, although I've got some concerns about some of the cabinet ministers that are suggested as, as potential leaders here. I think they're all going to be tainted as part of team Trudeau. Uh, that's why a lot of liberals are looking at somebody like Mark Carney, the former governor of the bank of Canada as a potential liberal leader. Although they once before went with a leader who had absolutely no political experience. That was Michael Ignatieff. We know how that worked out. Uh, Christy Clark, the former uh, premier of British Columbia, uh, is, is somebody else whose name is being bandied about. Probably not a bad suggestion and a bad idea. She certainly has the political experience. She's a middle uh, of the road liberal, uh, a conservative liberal, a blue liberal, as it were which may be exactly what people are looking for these days. I don't know where they're going to go, and I don't know what the result's going to be, but I do know this. If Justin Trudeau, if the prime minister continues to ignore all the signs that are out there right now and simply say, damn the torpedoes, I'm going ahead with this, it could be done as hit the risk of his political future, the risk of the Liberal Party's political future, and frankly, and maybe most importantly, the future of this country. I hope he thinks about that. I hope he understands the ramifications. That's it for this edition of the Bill Kelly Podcast. You can follow us, of course, on Substack, uh, of course, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and uh, YouTube. And if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell on the side there and make sure that you spread the word about our podcast. Until then, until the next time, stay tuned and stay informed. I'm Bill Kelly. Talk to you next time. Bill Kelly Podcast brought to you by Wizens Law, personal injury lawyers. Listen, you didn't choose to get injured, but you can choose the right lawyer. Wizens Law, 905-522-1102 or wizenslaw.com.